there, I'm Len Wolston. I'm a sci-fi fantasy writer, blogger, and nerd, and thanks for checking out my channel today. So last week I shared with you my tips and tricks on how to write a query letter that will get the attention of agents and publishers. If you happen to miss that, I'm going to go ahead and link that video down below in the description box so you can check that out if you're interested in how to write a query letter. But today we'll be focusing on writing the synopsis. A synopsis is a detailed and comprehensive overview of your book's plot. It will also reveal what your main character is and the character's arc by the end of the book, and it will be basically a great larger view of what your book is all about. So you may be asking, well, why would an agent or publisher even want a synopsis? Shouldn't they just be able to read my opening pages and be swept away with the story and just want to read the whole thing? Well, not so fast. There's actually a good reason for wanting to have a synopsis. While not every agent or publisher is going to make that part of their submission guidelines, why they would want one is because it gives a very good overview, like I said, of your story. So this in itself is a great snapshot for that agent or that publisher to kind of get an overall feel for how you are as a writer. Are you able to have a cohesive story? Is there a character arc? Maybe there's something that all these twists and turns that you think are so great are actually something that you need to improve on. Some of these and most of these will come through in how you write that synopsis. Now it's worth mentioning that if you ask any writer, any published author, or somebody who's just been in the query trenches before and has written one of these, that you will find that there is a resounding dislike for actually writing the synopsis. You would think as a writer, oh, it's something I get to do, I get to gush about my story and get to tell all the details and everything. Yet when it's, it comes down to it and you're trying to actually write that synopsis, it can very much feel like you're trying to cram the Millennium Falcon into the TARDIS, which might be something that you would rather do than write that dang synopsis. If you're feeling that way, guess what? You're on the right track. But let me give you some insight as to how to write a great synopsis. So the first thing that I suggest to people is that you review your outline. Reviewing that outline that you had originally looked at when you were trying to comprise all that the story was will give you a lot of the elements that you're going to need for the synopsis, such as who is the story about, what are they doing in the story, and what happens at the end? Do they succeed or do they fail? Another great thing that I like to advise people to do is something that I personally do when I write my synopsis. What I do is I sit down and I go through every single chapter. And what I try to do with every single chapter that I'm looking at is I try to summarize it in one sentence. Mm, maybe two sentences if it's a really long or a very detailed chapter, but no more than that. So once I've done that and I've gone through all of my chapters and I have basically this long list of all of these different um, sentences that are summarizing, I take that and then I kind of polish it into a synopsis. The reason for this is because you're going to be able to see overall how you are describing each of your chapters and whether or not there is importance to the chapters that should be mentioned in the synopsis. That being said, what I also do, because I write in multiple um, POVs, points of view, um, I usually will take that whole list of all those sentences that I've comprised for all my chapter summaries, if you will, and I'll go through and I will highlight those that are actually from my main character's point of view. Because when you're doing your synopsis, that's who you want to focus on. You want to focus on that main character and what is happening to them in the story. And yes, I know it can be really hard if you have all these multiple points of view, especially if you're doing something like a space opera or an epic fantasy where there's just so much that you want to try to cram into there, but focus on that main character. If you find also that you have the main character story down pretty good with all those sentences that you've written, and you're still like, oh, but they really need to know about this person's point of view, that's totally fine. 
I recommend that if you are writing in a multiple point of view and you say, okay, I have my main character, but they're really missing this information, focus on the antagonist. More chances than not, you're gonna have the antagonist point of view or somebody that is in relation to that antagonist, and you can include that in your synopsis. So you can say that main character is doing this and wrapped up with this. Meanwhile, my antagonist is doing this. Now comes time to polishing. Having an idea of what those sentences are, what chapters that you want to mention are as a concrete, this is what the story is about, then you want to take those and you want to start kind of tweaking them, kind of polishing them. And the way that you do that is you can piece certain um, chapters together of those sentences that you have to maybe form that paragraph. So maybe it's an overall thing that you're wanting to convey as far as the plot's going, but you're gonna need to be able to kind of mesh those together in a very cohesive way. So this is where you wanna look at what your sentences are. You wanna tighten up the language that you're using and also make sure that you're taking out any of the words that kind of seem like they're just kind of filler words and put them in with some action and some descriptive words because you're gonna want to be able to have that agent, to have that publisher read the synopsis and kind of get that overall sense of what the story is and get really excited about it. You don't want this to be dry. Now here's where a lot of writers seem to go in the wrong direction. And that is getting it confused, the synopsis confused with like what we did in the query. In the query we were trying to entice, we were trying to make it so that we're not giving away all the information because we're gonna wanna leave you with wanting more. In a synopsis, we're not doing that. You need to spill all the beans. Yep, all of them. So don't think that you're gonna be able to get away with writing your synopsis and not telling us of, whoa, major plot twist here. We need to have that in the synopsis because at this point we wanna know exactly what is happening in that story. So don't be vague. Once you have all that compiled into roughly about a page, maybe two pages of what a synopsis is, then the best advice I can give people is to read your synopsis out loud. Does it sound right? Are you transitioning well? Are you finding that, oh, you're getting bored just reading it? Or is it exciting? Is it full of life? Do you have that voice in your synopsis? That's something that you're going to want to be able to pick up on. And reading out loud seems to be the best way for us to be able to hear how we're coming across in writing the synopsis. Finally, I will say that the best thing to do at this point, once you are confident that you have the synopsis down, recruit two people. The first one is going to be likely your CP or a beta reader who actually knows what the story is and they've read it. Have them read your synopsis. Are there things that you're forgetting that you didn't mention? Or are there things that you should highlight more because they see that this is your story's strong point? Have them give your feedback on your synopsis. The other person that you should recruit for this is somebody who has no idea what your story is. So take that person, give them your synopsis, and try to get an overall sense of what they are seeing with the story. Does that make sense? Does it make them where they're like, wow, this is really good. This is really cohesive. It's got lots of twists and turns. It's full of really seemingly great characters. And have them give that insight because once you get the insight of both of those from the person that has read it versus the person that hasn't read it, you will kind of get a general sense if you're going in the right direction or you maybe need to tweak that yet again, which is totally fine because we all do it. Well, there you have it. Those are my kind of tips and tricks on how to write that synopsis. And I'm also going to be linking a couple of articles down below. There's one article down below in the description box that you will find from Writer's Digest, which gives a great overview on how to write a synopsis. I am also going to be including the link to Jane Friedman's article on how to write a synopsis because she does a wonderful job. And if you're not following Jane, then I highly recommend it because she's got lots of great writing advice. So definitely go check her out. If you have any further questions about how to write a synopsis, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. If there are any resources that have helped you that you would love to share, also put those in the comment section down below because I'm all about writers helping other writers, so I definitely could use the resources just for me, but I also wanna make them available to other people who are also getting ready to query. 
Once again, thanks for checking out my channel today. If you liked this video, go ahead and show so by giving a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe on your way out so that you don't miss any of my writing related videos that I post on Fridays. If you have an idea of a topic that you want me to cover or just want to just say hi, go ahead and leave me a comment down below. And with that, I hope you guys have a great week and until next video, bye!